Welcome back to the channel. This is episode 11 of Movies That Matter. I haven't done one in two weeks, so I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. And yeah, just a lot of stuff going on. I've been busy, but episode 11 already, where we talk about all the latest movie and TV news. We break it down with you guys. You guys get in the comments and let me know your thoughts. If you're watching live or here on Instagram, I appreciate you being here. Get in the conversation. If you're watching a little bit later on YouTube, get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about all the stuff that we talk about here today. I'll try and be quick. Keep it under 20 minutes, maybe over 20 minutes. Let's see how we go. Let's see how much we delve into all this new. So guys, let's get into topic number one. And topic number one is Patty Jenkins might not return for Wonder Woman 3. Okay, Wonder Woman 1, big success. So critics and box office, huge money made there. Wonder Woman 2, Wonder Woman 84 is out just now. I got to see it twice already in theaters. I had a great time. You guys know my review. It's on the channel. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. I loved it. But I think Patty Jenkins needs to return for a Wonder Woman tree. You know, like she talked about here in an interview. She goes, um, we'll see what happens. I really don't know. I know that I'd love to do a third one if the circumstances were right and there was still a theatrical model possible. I don't know that I would if there wasn't. So Patty Jenkins is big into having her movies into theaters and she's a bit disappointed that DC or the Warner Brothers have gone in the direction of putting their movies on HBO Max but what else were they supposed to do? Were they supposed to wait for the pandemic to get better? Are theaters going to get better? I don't know. A new strain of the virus has hit the UK as well so who's to say that this virus won't be around for another two to three years and people just don't want to go to theaters. We just don't know what, what's going to happen and how things are going to go in the next little while so we can't bank on the theaters being open in a few months because then there's going to be so much movies crammed together but Patty Jenkins has gone to Disney now. She's, Disney, she's going to be doing a Star Wars movie. She thinks that's going to be a theatrical movie and maybe by the time that comes out in 2022 it, it will happen. Theaters will be open but no guarantee. You know, Tony Movie Chappie goes, hey, how was it, what was it like to interview Zack Snyder for the first time? Pretty cool, man. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. It's on the channel, guys, if you want to check that out. Um, 20 minutes he said with us and talked about movies so that was pretty cool for Zack Snyder to pop by and he popped by in a lot of streams as well for the Deck the Hall with Justice streams and uh, it, was just, it was a really good day and a lot of fun. But Patty Jenkins for me needs to return for Wonder Woman 3. Brilliant. Wonder Woman 1 and 2. A new director coming in has happened with many franchises before in the past but they've gone away from what that kind of first movie had even though Wonder Woman 84 is very different from the first I don't know, man. I, I just love her to come back for Wonder Woman 3, but how long is that going to be? Are WB, are DC going to wait four or five years for her to finish her Star Wars movie for her to come back when Wonder Woman is a very successful character? I just don't know. I know the box office. Like, I hate the people now who are comparing the box office now with Wonder Woman 84 saying it's not making that much money. Hey, guys, we're in a global pandemic. What are you expecting this movie to make? That's why it's on HBO Max. That's why Jason Killard, the guy who's over HBO Max, has put it on to HBO Max so movies can still live on in some capacity and we can still watch them instead of waiting for theaters to open. Uh, City Q goes, well, I think it's a bad idea because Max is not available outside the US, so it will lead to a huge piracy issue. Yeah, I agree with that. They need to get it sorted on an international um, way so HP Max is available but I don't think it's going to be an available app like Disney Plus or Netflix because they have a lot of contracts with TV companies in each contract country so here they have Sky that's a company they're in contract with that's another five years so I don't know what they're going to do on an international basis are they just going to have HBO Max in the US releasing in theaters where they're open and then have VOD where you can buy it or purchase it or, or rent it I don't know what they're going to do but they need to sort out the international way very quickly or they will lose money and piracy will be a big issue I totally agree with that okay guys let's get on to topic number two and topic number two is Star Wars the book of Bobo Fett was announced in the post credit scene on the finale of the Mandalorian season 2. Pretty good season. I really enjoyed it. You can check my review out for that on the channel as well. But the post credit scene was Boba Fett. And it said the book of Boba Fett. So that seems to be the next series. Now at the Disney Investor Day. They didn't announce this. They didn't say that a series was coming with Boba Fett. Even though many bloggers. Many um, you know, people in the industry have been saying. They're shooting Boba Fett right now. Why didn't they announce it? Well John Favreau was doing interviews for the Mandalorian season finale and he said that they didn't want to spoil anything, they didn't want to give anything away, so that's why they wanted to keep it secret. So they're shooting that right now. Now there is some doubts over the Mandalorian series as a whole, what's going to happen there? People saying there's onset problems with Pedro Pascal, and I, I don't know, Like it's hard to believe any of this stuff, we don't know the concrete uh, evidence or anything like that, what happened. But Mando isn't shooting right now, and the next time that we will see the Mandalorian show is in 2022. 
And that's a bit of a shock since how successful this series has been over the last two years and how it's kind of re rejuvenated Star Wars. You know, it's brought people back to loving and engaging with Star Wars because The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker, crossed, it caused a big division between the Star Wars fandom and The Mandalorian was really putting it back right. But of course, there's other spin-offs coming. Lando, we've got the High, Re the High Republic show. We have got the Ahsoka Tana show. You know, there's so many other shows coming, so maybe putting Mando on the back burner could be a good idea because there's many shows to come. Obi-Wan Kenobi will be shooting early next year as well. So there is loads of Star Wars content coming to Disney+. Plus. But I, I do find it very weird that Mando won't be seen for a long time. They said they're going to shoot Mandalorian Season 3 after they do Boba Fett. You know, they're getting everything ready for the Mando Season 3. But is Pedro Pascal going to return? Will he be in the suit? You know, it, it is pretty interesting. But the Boba Fett show, I'm looking forward to it. You know, Theo and Morrison... Him back in the role, kicked ass in that episode 6 I think it was, the one that um, Rodriguez directed, the action packed one where he got the suit back, you know, pretty cool stuff. So I'm, in, I'm interested in a Boba Fett series on Disney Plus and it, if it's at the same high quality as Mando was, then we're in for something and the ending for that Mando uh, episode season finale was, was pretty badass. So if they can bring some elements of that into Boba Fett then how cool will, will that be, you know? So let's move on to topic number three, guys. This is about George Clooney and how he was wrong about what he told Ben Affleck about Batman. So George Clooney, of course, was Batman in the 90s, took over for Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer took over for Michael Keaton. And those movies never really stood a chance after that, even though they made some money, but critics didn't really like them. But I'm sure they have their audience. I'm sure there's people out there. I'm sure you guys get some love out of those movies. If you grew up with them. Or children that grew up with them. I think they're okay. There's something to be watched. They're another incarnation of the character. I don't think they're terrible, terrible films or anything like that. There's something to be watched with them. At the end of the day, it's only a movie, guys. Okay? So George Clooney said he was wrong about what he told Ben Affleck. And this is what he told him. I think also because I've been around. And also because I've done, you know. I've sort of had both rounds, you know. I've been a flip-flop. I've bombed in things and I've had big successes. And it doesn't mean that, they, that they're listened. Ben didn't listen to me and he ended up doing a great job and I was wrong. But I can only impart my wisdom from my experience. I just said, don't have nipples on that suit. So he basically told Ben Affleck, don't do Batman. It will end your career. You know, George Clooney has gone on record so many times saying that he was a big problem for Batman, the Batman movie was terrible and all those kind of things and he told Ben Affleck not to do it but gladly Ben Affleck said you know what I'm going to do it, I'm going to be the Dark Knight and he gave us an unbelievable character in Batman v Superman and I'm sure in Zack Snyder's Justice we will see something very very similar so I can't wait for that but it's kind of funny how George Clooney said don't do it, don't do that role, you know it was terrible for me, people will hate you and stuff like that, people kind of hate Ben Affleck's Batman after Justice League 2017 but Glad we we'll get to see the real Batman in the Snyder Cut in March. But that was pretty funny, guys. George Clooney telling them not to do it. What do you think of that? And even did you see some of the reports that um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney didn't even shoot any scenes together for that movie? That's ridiculous. And George Clooney didn't get paid that much. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, big star, big action star, got loads of, of the money for that movie. But that was pretty interesting. They never, sh never in the same room when they shot a scene together, which is pretty weird. But yeah, those movies... Not the best, but there's something to be had with them. Now, guys, let me know your thoughts on all those uh, topics that we've already talked about. Paddy Jenkins not returning for one and three, uh, the book of Bobo Fetch solo show coming, and George Clooney telling Ben Affleck, don't do Batman, but he was wrong. Now, topic number four, guys, is about M. Night. I always butcher his name, and I'm sure everybody always does. M. Night Shyamalan, the director of Unbreakable, of Sixth Sense, of Signs, of Glass, of Split, you know, I love him as a director because he always leaves you thinking after the movie. He always has you like, what did I just watch? And like Unbreakable for me is a great comic book movie, even though there is so much action in it and it probably wouldn't be looked at as a comic book film. But it's probably one of the best ones ever made. I love Split and I really like the meaning behind Glass. But the kind of discussions about him directing a DC or Marvel movie, and I would love to see that. Now, I would probably love to see him do a DC movie more than a Marvel movie. And why would that be? Well, look, DC kind of has a broader range of characters and of stories that he could do. 
Marvel has its Marvel Cinematic Universe, which works, and it's great. But I think putting a director like M. Night into a box, like Marvel do with some other directors, they have to stick to a formula, they have to add certain jokes, things like that, it works. But I think it would be a disservice to his talents. I think DC would suit M. Night's capabilities a lot more. I know it's a bit ironic since... Uh, Patty Jenkins has talked about Warner Bros. kind of butchering the end of One Room One, what they did with Justice League in 2017, what they did with David Ayer's Suicide Squad. I know that's a bit ironic, but you know, I think DC does suit him a lot more. This is what he had to say. I've had many conversations over the years about many of the superheroes with many of the studios that own them. And how would how would I want to approach it? And it's one of those things that I think this my style. If there was ever a situation, I mean, I said, I did it. I made my comic book movie the way I wanted to make my comic book movie. But the the minimalism, the insulating, uh, not using the CGI, all that stuff is a very different language. So whenever we've had those conversations in the past about X, Y, and Z person, it's your character or franchise. I get so nervous about like, hey, this is not what you would want me to do, but make it very quiet and tiny and introspective. So he talks about making his own superhero trilogy, which was Unbreakable, which was Split, which was Glass. That was his thing. That's what he wanted to do. And DC Guardian goes, DC is more realistic. And I agree with that. It is more realistic and it's more grounded in some of the story elements that it does. Look at the Dark Knight trilogy. Very grounded story. And I think if M. Night was to do a, a, a story of a superhero, it would have grounded elements, but it wouldn't have the big CGI spectacles. It would have you thinking after the movie. And I would love that. And I, I, I would love that because I like those type of movies. But if he was to do that, I think DC does suit him. But as he said here in the, in the interview, he's afraid to take on these characters that wouldn't be his. People own these characters. He'd have to have the CGI. He wouldn't want those kind of things in it. And those big action set pieces, he would like to do his own thing. I'd love him for him to do a DC movie, but also I don't want him put into a box where he has to limit his capabilities. I think that could happen when he's given a hundred or two million million budget to do a superhero movie. That could happen. That could easily happen. I don't want that to happen. Like he even put money, his own money into Glass, into Split, and another, another movie he did as well. I can't think. Of, I think it's called The Gift. No, maybe it's not called The Gift. It's kind of like a found footage kind of thing. He put his own money into those movies because he lost a, a lot of rep. Because of the Airbender movie that he did as well, being a flop and After Earth and stuff like that, so his reputation went down. But he's starting to come back by making some really, really good, good movies. But guys, what do you think of M Night, uh, Shyamalan doing a DC or Marvel movie? Which character do you think would be perfect for him? I don't know about character, but definitely DC would be um, my kind of character for him to do. People talk about Doctor Strange. That would be cool if it wasn't in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because I think Marvel have their own formula for that type of character. But maybe a Joker movie or one of those kind of villains of Batman would be pretty awesome. And I would love to see that. But guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, another topic I'm pretty excited over. And you're probably like, Viking, why are you excited about this? Well, look, I'm a big Toy Story fan. I've always been. Grew up with the movies. Toy Story 1, 2, 3, 4. Love them all. Perfect animated movies. The pinnacle of animation, in my opinion. But at that Disney investor day, they announced that a Buzz Lightyear solo movie would be happening. And I was like, wow, pretty cool. Is Tim Allen coming back, the voice of the character? And they were like, nope, not coming back. I was like, okay, a bit disappointed, but who's coming in? So Chris Evans, Captain America himself, will be doing the voice of Buzz Lightyear. Now, it's not Buzz Lightyear from the four movies that we've seen. It's actually... Chris Evans is voicing a character that Buzz Lightyear the toy was made of. So we're getting to see who the toy was made after. You know, so this character, Lightyear, Buzz Lightyear, I'm guessing it's some kind of astronaut or something like that, space hero or something like that. He's a famous person in this universe. And the toy, Buzz Lightyear, was made because of him. So that's pretty interesting. That's different. So it won't be Tim Allen. It won't be the same Buzz Lightyear that we've seen in the Toy Story movies. It's going to be a person. And Chris Evans is voicing that person. And maybe at the end we get a reference of the Toy Story toys watching the movie or something like that. That would be pretty cool. A little post credits thing like that. That would be a good nod to the original four movies. But yeah, Chris Evans, of course, great actor. Brilliant. If you haven't seen Knives Out, he's brilliant in that movie. It's a great kind of um, murder mystery. Uh, Ryan Johnson directed it. He's brilliant in that movie. And, and Chris Evans has some really good films on his filmography away from the Marvel stuff. You know, some actors find it hard when they get away from the Marvel stuff to make good movies and for them to be hits. But it looks like Chris Evans won't have any problems with that. And I think this movie could be very successful going off the Toy Story franchise and him playing the character of Buzz Lightyear. I'm going to, I'm going to be there to watch it, no problem. Uh, it might be just me and a million other kids, but... 
man, I think just to see the character back on the big screen would be pretty cool. And of course, Chris Evans will bring his own uniqueness to it. So that's pretty cool as well. But guys, what do you think of that? Chris Evans doing a Buzz Lightyear solo movie for Disney. I'll watch it. I'll look forward to that for Pixar. Uh, but yeah, guys, let me know. Next topic. Nicolas Cage, January 5th, 2021, has a new show coming out on Netflix. Now, this show is, is pretty weird. It's On Netflix, what they're doing is the origins of all the curse words. So, F, shit, C word, all those kind of words. They've released two trailers so far. So, basically, Nicolas Cage is bringing us through history of where these curse words originated from. And you know what? If you haven't checked out the trailers, guys, the trailers are pretty interesting. There's some celebrity guest appearances in it as well. And look, they have to have Samuel L. Jackson make a cameo to say mother ever you know they have to that'd be pretty cool but Nicolas Cage is one of those actors that picks weird roles he's a weird actor he does some weird stuff so it's gonna be pretty cool to see that that's like that's coming pretty soon after Christmas is over January 5th on Netflix so maybe Nicolas Cage can save 2021 before it even starts but I thought that was pretty cool and I'm interested to hear your guys thoughts about this show and what it could be and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun Nicolas Cage is a weird guy this kind of suits him a good bit but guys next topic okay now you guys are probably going to call me a girl. Uh, and you know what? You could probably be right. So growing up on Disney Channel, I used to watch Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, Lizzie McGuire, I think it ran for three or four seasons. Had a movie. You know, had a pretty big fan base. And at D23, Disney announced that they were bringing back Lizzie McGuire for her own TV show. Hilary Duff was coming back. The showrunner was coming back. All the cast were coming back. So everyone got pretty much excited for that series coming to Disney+. Plus. When Hilary Duff came out, she said it's going to be a very mature show. It's going to follow uh, Lizzie in her 30s. And so everyone was excited. They couldn't wait for that. I couldn't wait for it as well. But it was going to be a mature show. They hired the showrunner back. That's okay. They shot two episodes, guys. Two episodes. Then the Disney executives watched the first two episodes and said, this is not what we wanted. But then the showrunner was like, this is what you paid me to do. This is what I agreed with you guys. When we were coming back, we were making this type of show. And they said, no, change it. The showrunner wouldn't do it. They fired the showrunner. Lizzie McGuire herself, Hilary Duff, didn't know that the showrunner was fired. I think she was on her honeymoon or something. But yeah, she said, I'm not doing it unless the showrunner is evolved. And this is the story that we all signed up for. For Lizzie McGuire, a mature story in her 30s. That's why we wanted to do it. And you guys have changed your word. So Lizzie McGuire, Hilary Duff won't do the show with Lizzie McGuire now. The reboot is not happening. Even though they've shot two episodes... They're not doing it because they couldn't come to an agreement. Now, for me, who's the wrong who's the wrong guy here? It's the Disney invest uh, the Disney executives. They greenlit this project. They said, "Look, yeah, you can go. There's your cast. You okay? There's your script. You're doing it." They read the script and they greenlit the script and then it was shot. And then they look at the the episodes and they're like, "No, this is not what we wanted." Pretty bad on um, the Disney executives' point of view. And Hilary Duff herself went on Instagram said, "Look, guys, we tried." But we wanted to stay true to the character of who Lizzie McGuire would have been in her 30s. Didn't work out. That's not what they wanted. But even though they signed us up for that type of, type of role. And like they were saying that this isn't what Disney Plus is for. This type of show. So Hilary Duff was like, we'll put us on Hulu. Because Disney owned Hulu. And that's for mature shows. And they still wouldn't do it. So the movie, the, the show has been squashed. It doesn't look like it's happening right now. And that's a big disappointment. Because the Lizzie McGuire fan base is actually huge many people grew up in that show i grew up in it as well and i was going to check it out but if you go to her instagram comments if you look at the reception of the liz mcguire show not happening you think a riot's after going on because people are very disappointed that it's not happening which is amazing hopefully they can get things right and hopefully it does happen but i think it's very poor on disney to go back on the word and say look that's not what we wanted we're not doing it anymore even though they gave them the money and they read the scripts and they said <coughs> go ahead and do it I don't know. Guys, were you disappointed that Liz McGuire show was not happening anymore? Were you even excited in the first place? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, another movie that I'm really looking forward to. Big Walking Dead fan. You guys know that. Love The Walking Dead. I've been watching it since 2010. Never missed an episode. Love the show. Love the zombie genre. Got to talk about Zack Snyder about some zombies as well, which was pretty cool. Looking forward to his Army of the Dead movie. But one of the greatest characters in The Walking Dead history was Rick Grimes, played by Andrew Lincoln, who was a, who was a great actor and never got any award, award nominations for his role as Rick Grimes, which was, I don't know, a robbery, because he's a great actor. But he left the show in season 9, episode 5, I think November 2019 is when he left the show. Everyone was disappointed, but we were told after that a Rick Grimes trilogy was coming of movies that were going to play in theatres. Everyone got excited, everyone was happy with that, we could not wait 
months and months passed by where we didn't hear anything from the Rick Grimes movies. No shooting, no script finish. And we were even like, is this going to happen at this stage? It looked like they were getting ready to do it. Then COVID hit. And then we were like, oh my God, this movie will never happen. Just bring them back to the show. Because the show was ending, of course, after season 11. People were disappointed. But now, Rick Grimes himself, Andrew Lincoln, has come out. He's doing a stage play of Scrooge. Uh, Christmas Carol so he has said that they are expecting to starting to shoot that movie in spring 2021 so hopefully hopefully no more big spikes happen wherever they're going to shoot hopefully they can get into a set and do this movie finally even if it's just one at this stage I'll take it you know I've been looking forward to the Rick Grime movies for years my one of my favorite tv characters of all time so to see him come back and be in a 90 minute or two hour movie Ah, be brilliant. You know, it would be brilliant. And they're going to treat this like a movie. The budget's going to be big. The action's going to be big. So I can't wait. Andrew Lincoln's a great actor. So I hope the script does service to his acting ability. I'm sure it will. And I'm sure he wouldn't sign up for it unless it is a great script. So finally, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to start shooting at the start of 2021. And that's something that we can all be excited for, guys, if you're a Walking Dead fan. And even if you're not, it might be something to get into now if you're stuck at home, something to binge. Ten seasons, I know it's a lot, but it is a good show with some very interesting characters. And Rick Grimes is a great character, one of the best TV characters of all time. And Andrew Lincoln is great. So I'm happy that's finally happening, hopefully. <laughs> uh, hopefully I don't jinx it too much. But another thing I want to talk about, guys, last topic for today is Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is set to be one of the biggest comic book movies of all time. The multiverse is being introduced. We know that One Division, Doctor Strange 2, 2 and Spider-Man 3 are all linking together in kind of a trilogy of stories. But William Defoe's Green Goblin is set to come back. He was in the first Raimi Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Very great villain. Very scary villain. Very intimidating. But it looks like he's set to come back for Spider-Man 3. Now we all also know that Alfred Molina is coming back. We know that... Charlie Cox, Daredevil, and Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool are rumoured, rumoured so far, to appear in it, along with Andrew Garfield, Tony Maguire, J.K. Simmons. So many characters are going to pop up in Spider-Man 3, and adding Green Goblin to it, William Dafoe's Green Goblin, is pretty great. Now, in the first one, he was very unhinged, he was scary, he was intimidating, so I hope they bring that factor over to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in some capacity. I hope they don't make him too cheesy, but it's cool. It looks like they're setting up a Spider-Man vs. the Sinister Six. we got Jimmy Fox coming back, Alfred Molina. Who else is going to appear as villains in this movie? Will Sam Man come back? That's another rumour, but William Dafoe coming back. And of course, he is um, Orm, is it? Not, no, it's not Orm. He is Volko in um, Aquaman, and he will be in Zack Snyder's Justice League in March as well. So he's going back to his OG comic book character of Green Goblin. But guys, I can't wait for that. That's probably one of my most anticipated movies coming out in the next few years, probably because I want Tobey Maguire to come back. But he hasn't, he has not signed yet. Tobey Maguire is not fully back yet, um, not confirmed. So maybe it's a money issue, maybe it's a screen time issue. But I hopefully, hopefully, Tobey Maguire does say, yeah, I want to join. So, and now with William Defoe coming back as well. I can't wait for that. But guys, what do you think of all the topics that we talked about today? Patty Jenkins might not return for Wonder Woman 3 because she wants that theatrical experience. Bobo Fett show happening and the situation with Mando and season 3 not shooting for a while. George Clooney told Ben Affleck not to do Batman. <laughs> Thank God that he did do Batman. M. Night Mike was interested in a DC or Marvel movie. Chris Evans doing the light. Uh, Buzz Lightyear voice which I can't wait for Nick Cage's Netflix documentary about the swear words F, C, B all those words where they came from uh, Lizzie McGuire's show is squashed Rick Grimes movie finally starting to shoot and the Green Gro- Goblin Goblin? Goblin? William Dafoe coming back as Green Goblin in Spider-Man 3 which of those topics are you most interested in guys what do you think let me know in the comments below give a like subscribe comment if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. If you're watching on Instagram, I appreciate you being here, guys. Always interacting with the posts is important, and I love interacting with you guys. Guys, have a good day. Do something that makes you happy. Watch a movie. Eat some good food. Relax. Enjoy yourself. Come on. It's Christmas. Might do some Christmas reviews or themed videos coming up pretty soon. Stay tuned for the channel, guys.